Hello everybody, welcome back to Short Story Saturdays. Today I'm going to be reading a short passage from Through My Eyes by Ruby Bridges. And I'm going to read the front flap just so you can get a little bit of background information about Ruby Bridges. On November 14, 1960, a tiny six-year-old black child surrounded by federal marshals, walked through a mob of screaming segregationists and into her school. From where she sat in the office, Ruby Bridges could see parents marching through the halls and taking their children out of classrooms. The next day, Ruby walked through the angry mob once again and into a school where she saw no other students. The white children did not go to school that day, and they wouldn't go to school for many days to come. Surrounded by racial turmoil, Ruby, the only student in a classroom with one wonderful teacher, learned to read and add. This is a story of a pivotal event in history as Ruby Bridges saw it unfold around her. Ruby's poignant words, quotations from writers and from other adults who observed her, and dramatic photographs recreate an amazing story of innocence, courage, and forgiveness. Ruby Bridges' story is an inspiration to us all. And I'm also going to read you a little bit about Ruby Bridges. So Ruby Bridges became a pioneer in school integration at the age of six when she was chosen to spend her first grade year in what had formerly been an all-white elementary school. She lives with her husband and sons in New Orleans, Louisiana. And Ruby Bridges is 65 years old. She is still alive today. And I'm going to be reading preface to my story. When I was six years old, the civil rights movement came knocking at the door. It was 1960 and history pushed in and swept me up in a whirlwind. At the time, I knew little about the racial fears and hatred in Louisiana, where I was growing up. Young children never know about racism at the start. It's we adults who teach it. In spite of the after effects of the whirlwind, I feel privileged now to have been a part of the civil rights struggle. The 1950s and 60s were important decades. Negroes, as African Americans were known then, dared at last to demand equal treatment as American citizens. School integration was only one part of the struggle, but an absolutely essential part. In 1954, coincidentally, the year I was born, the U.S. Supreme Court ordered the end of the separate but equal education for African-American children. Because of her race, Linda Brown was not allowed to attend her local elementary school. All nine justices of the Supreme Court agreed that Linda had a legal right to go to that school. But for years afterward, the court looked the other way when states in the South ignored its orders. Black children in states like Louisiana and Mississippi continued to attend all black public schools. White children went to separate and usually better schools. By 1957, less than 2% of Southern schools had been integrated. That year, nine black high school students enrolled in a white school in Little Rock, Arkansas. The white segregationists in Arkansas 
were furious. President Dwight D. Eisenhower ordered federal troops, soldiers with rifles and machine guns mounted on military jeeps to protect Little Rock Nine in their school. Even after the events in Little Rock, Louisiana, continued to ignore its African-American children. However, the civil rights movement was growing stronger. A federal court gave the city a deadline for school integration, September 1960. I didn't remember everything about that school year, but there are events and feelings I will never forget. In writing this book, I recall how integration looked to me then, when I was six and limited to my own small world. However, as an adult, I wanted to fill in some of the blanks about what was a serious racial crisis in the American South. I have tried to give you the bigger picture through my eyes. And the secret code for our summer reading program is SUMMER250. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. I will see you next week.